quantum entanglement, you got What is quantum entanglement? Let's prepare for a blue bird and a red bird. Then we can say that the two birds are entangled because there are only two conditions that if one is blue and the other can only be red. However, from the quantum mechanics point of view, we don't know which bird is in the cylinder until it is opened. This eventually leads that the bird is stochastic half blue and half red at the same time. But our observation of opening the cylinder determines the color of the bird in the cylinder, and at the same time, the color of the bird in the cylinder that was sent to Andromeda also determined. Information from distance places about 2.5 million light years passed in seconds. This is a phenomenon called quantum entanglement, and the state where the ball in the cylinder is not fixed until the observation is called superposition state. In quantum mechanics, a linear superposition of two states can represent the general quantum state qubit. Those entangled quantum can cause quantum teleportation. Prepare two stations. One is a transmitting station T, the other is a receiving station R. Then entangled photons A and B send to each station T and R. Also, we have another photon X which we would like to transmit to station R. X and A are also entangled, then states B and X are identical by also owner. Therefore, when you measure the state of X, the state of B is fixed to an identical state of X. That is, the properties of X is transferred to station R. This process is called teleportation. Quantum teleportation is the transfer of quantum state from one location to another with previously shared quantum entanglement between the sending and receiving location. Then, will we have personal teleportation in the future? No, it is impossible. To teleport a person, we must convert our mass into quantum information and restore it to the desired location. Quantizing all human components will generate 10 to 20s power to quantum bits which will take billions of years to process and send them to today's computers. However, teleportation is possible in a diamond. We will introduce a paper. The name is Teleporting Quantum Information in a Diamond. Here is the structure of the diamond, which we can utilize is for quantum teleportation. Negatively charged nitrogen faking center in diamond consists of a nitrogen impurity and an adjacent vacancy where the triplet state electron is localized. Both the electron and the nitrogen nucleus show a spin 1 property, constituting a 3 level system with two degenerate states, MSL equal plus minus 1 and 1 MSL equal 0 state. These states can be denoted as this and this. On the other hand, a carbon nucleus spin shows a spin hair property constituting a two-level system with two degenerate ML equal plus minus one half states, which can be denoted as this. Carbon and nitrogen have hyperfine interaction with electron. Hyperfine interaction is the interaction between electron and nucleus. There is also spin orbit interaction between electron and photon. We will explain this concept later in details. Before we look at the process of teleportation, let's look at the base state. When two particles A and B are in state of 0 and 1, the simple basis states that can be derived are four product states represented by this. We can derive 12 quantum states from the superposition of two of the four product states Specific first states that maximize the quantum entanglement are called base state as follow. The teleportation process can be divided into three steps. First, we prepare an entanglement between electron spin and carbon nucleus spin through an initializing process, which we will learn about more later. Second, we measure photon polarization and electron spin through base state measurement. Finally, we can announce the success of the quantum state transfer from the photon into the carbon. 
Let's carefully look at each step in details. Firstly, to make an entanglement between electron and carbon nuclear spin, we first have to initialize them into zero state of electron and up spin of carbon. This will be the reference point of this experiment. We will talk about why the initializing process is required for entanglement later. It is hard to manipulate individual carbon nuclear spin, so we have to use an initializing process. In the other words, we will use an indirect way to flipping carbon nuclear from down to up spin rather than directly controlling the spin. With some technique which is called CPT, using red light having right circular polarization photon, we can excite the electron into a spin orbit correlated eigenstate A2, and then polarize electron into plus one state. It is transferred into the nitrogen nuclear spin to polarize into plus one state. This state of nitrogen acts as a nanomagnet applying local magnetic field on the electron to initialize the carbon nuclear spin into the up spin. The reason why we initialize them into zero and up spin states is to apply specific strategies to make an entanglement between them. The strategy uses some microwave and radio wave as shown here. We apply microwave and radio wave in regular order into the initialized zero and up spin state to make the entanglement between minus one down and plus one up spin state of electron and carbon which can be described as bell state. Now we finished entanglement between electron and carbon nucleus. Next, we are going to allow the electron to absorb an incoming photon with arbitrary polarization, which excites the electron into another spin orbit correlated eigenstate A1. In the other words, the electron excites the specific states by absorbing corresponding polarization state of photon. This projects the polarization state of the photon and the spin state of the electron into one of the belt states. Now we can describe the whole system as follow. These two are in entanglement between electron and carbon nuclear spin. By absorption of photon into the entangled electron, it excites into eigenstate A1. As a result, Photon absorption allows indirect observation of carbon nuclear spin states through the Bell state measurements of the state of electron and carbon nuclear spin. Finally, we can transfer polarization state of photon into carbon nucleus spin. In the previous section, we learned about the teleportation in MV centers of each node. A photon is emitted from one node, which is left, leaving an electron entangled with the emitted photon. The success of the photon storage in the other node, which is right, establishes the entanglement between two adjacent nodes. Since the photon moves in one direction from one diamond to another diamond, the teleportation system is called one-way quantum repeater system. This technology will contribute to the realization of long-haul quantum communications and distributed quantum computers. In more details, let's see how we can use the MV center to control multiple nuclear spin qubits. This electron spin is surrounded by an entire cloud of nuclear spins. About 1% of diamond consists of carbon-13, which is a spin-half system, and the rest consists of carbon-12, which has no spin. In other words, these nuclear spins cause decoherence. They flip-flop around randomly and create a slowly varying magnetic field on the MV center. If MV center is superposition state, then this fluctuating magnetic field changes the MV energy levels, which causes its phase evolution to become random and the quantum state is lost. 
The diffusion time is only about 5 microseconds. At this time, you can play a simple trick. When we apply a pulse that inverts the state of the MV, if we flip it, this also inverts the effect of the magnetic field on the spin. So, if we have the same time before and after this flip, then the effect of the field exactly cancels and the quantum state is protected. This is called spin echo. This cancellation only works if the magnetic field is constant over time. As long as the field fluctuates slowly, we can just flip the electron spin multiple times faster and faster than everything still averages out. How this works is expressed in this graph. When we make the electron spin in a superposition and apply more and more pulses, then the electron spin is protected longer and longer. In this way, we can protect the quantum state for over a second and even over microscopic scales about six orders of magnitude better than without flipping the electron. Thus, we have good coherence for the electron spin. Then how can we link these MV centers into a network? We are gonna use photons. There's two MV centers and two different diamonds. First, we make each of these MV centers emit a photon which is entangled with the spin state. Then we make these two photons go to a spin splitter together. After the spin splitter, it is fundamentally impossible to tell which photon came from which MV center. Because even though we detect a certain pattern of photons behind the beam splitter, we cannot know which photon has come from pointing up MV center or pointing down MV center. Normally speaking, Quantum mechanics tells us that we have created an entangled state between two distant MV centers. Of course, this doesn't succeed every time, but this becomes a resource to perform quantum computation in our network. Also this works, in experiment in depth, they created entanglement between on MV center in the physics building all the way on the left and another MV center all the way on the right, about 1.3 kilometers away at the other side of the Delft campus. This experiment was done to prove whether quantum entanglement really exists. The outcome was yes, quantum mechanics is still correct. Now, we can go and use this entanglement to build quantum networks for quantum technology. The next step is combining the control of multiple qubits in each node with optical links to generate entanglement in order to build increasingly larger quantum networks. It will be really exciting to see if we can really build large-scale quantum networks and make quantum computation and quantum cryptography our reality. Ah, that's quantum entanglement. I got it.